What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and uh, with the Pro Tour of course coming up and I have not stopped talking about it, uh, even diving into the past and stuff like that to kind of see a trend that we would notice in some of these, uh, you know, more limited meta games of uh, just a bunch of like some of the best players in the world playing Magic and this is a matchup that I expect will be played at some point during the weekend. Of course, you could say that for a lot of them, but I think this is one of the more popular decks, which I am playing versus a deck that I don't think gets enough love. So uh, today we're going to be looking at a match that I played on Moto. I'm going to be playing the four color slash like five color Omnath deck, and my opponent is actually going to be playing the black green Yawgmoth deck. Uh, I Got the match. I thought it was a matchup that is very likely to happen. It is, at least to me, kind of a classic matchup of one that has been historically bad, I felt like, for the Yawgmoth side. And then Yawgmoth kind of getting a little bit better uh, with Yorian getting banned and feels kind of even. But, you know, I felt like it was worth going in and kind of commentating this match and how it all played out. But uh, of course, before we get too deep into that, uh, I would appreciate it if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to support my content. I would appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you know when videos like this get posted. And if you travel down to the description of this video, you will see a link to the Discord server and to my Twitch channel. I would appreciate it if you also followed me over there and joined as well. So we get to be on the play for this game. Again, we are playing the like four color Omnath deck versus... Uh, Yawgmoth uh, decided to keep this hand, and wow, like this hand is not that good at all. Um, essentially, like getting to play a halfling on turn one and eventually kind of get to this uh, uh, fury, but you know, not even knowing like what we're playing against, like this hand just like wasn't good. I have no idea honestly what I was thinking, but kind of get bailed out by like the Omnath and everything. So, you know, we play fetch land. We have no reason to attack into this young wolf because they are going to get to get it for free. They're going to attack. The block is virtually free. We have this fury. So, like, if they play, like, something that, like, we care about, like, this bowmaster, they'll get to finish this off, unfortunately. But, like, we will get to kind of clear out their board if we choose to do so. So, I debate on it for a minute. I don't end up doing it. I think this Omnath is going to do a lot more work than just like pitching it to a Fury and like clearing this board or whatever. Plus our opponent more than likely is going to end up playing something else that we're going to care about more so than like this Bowmaster. So like we can just like get rid of this young wolf whenever essentially, which they end up playing another one and they play a, a Hepatra. So this is where I decide to pitch the Omnath to the Fury and start clearing their board. Uh, the big thing here is uh, we need to get rid of the uh, like this young wolf and the Hepatra. And the reason being, uh, if for those that are not aware of it, uh, if your opponent plays the Ogmoth, uh, you just need uh, two Undying creatures to kind of loop and draw as many cards as your life total or if you have an undying creature in a patra and you're able to kind of like get it started uh once you have like a snake it, the patra essentially does the same thing as an undying creature just it makes a token rather than obviously bouncing and coming back so with this fury i believe that we end up actually just leaving both the undying creatures and kind of clearing the board of some of the other stuff and going again to play this one ring uh, opponent thankfully doesn't have a natural fourth land so we end up playing the or end up getting to activate the one ring uh, they just play like a wall of roots uh, could have technically gotten blown out by a bowmaster that's where you should uh, if your opponent goes down on mana like that you should just like activate the ring where they don't have the available mana for Bowmaster because you can kind of just get got by the Bowmaster. But, you know, we draw this Teferi Time Raveler, and this is going to be a, a game where we kind of hope, like, the ring uh, helps us go off. Uh, we main phase just drawing cards because we want to give ourselves the max amount of chances to play things. And, like, kind of with what we have set up here, 
you know, we could go uh, to Fairy Time Raveler, bounce the Wall of Roots, sort of kind of set them back in that way. We have this uh, Leyline Binding rolled up. We can just kind of do it all, really. Uh, I believe we haven't played a land yet either, so we could fetch out our Black Source, which would be our Zagath Triome, to then be able to play the Halfling, uh, play this Time Raveler, uh, play the Halfling, or just leave up like Leyline Binding in that, so... Here, I believe I went Time Raveler, play, uh, bounce the wall, play a land, and then uh, leave up Leyline Binding. Just because we don't have a reason to uh, play this Halfling or anything. And I think here I end up just fetching and, and Leyline Binding the Wolf attacking the Time Raveler. They attack, or, you know, they get in their two points of damage. They replay out their dorks, we pass, and I mean, we're just going to end up drawing a bunch of cards. So it's kind of like banking on that in a way. So here, I mean, we just absolutely draw a ton of cards. We get to get this Omnath going. Uh, and we're essentially going to get rid of like all their important threats here. So we're going to end up playing our own Halfling, getting rid of their wall, playing another Halfling, and then getting rid of their other Undying creature. Leaving them with this, they end up playing the Ogmoth, which, you know, works out for us. And then, like, we have all this mana. We have, like, a ton of cards that we're going to be able to draw off this ring. You know, we find, unfortunately, I think the rest of our lands that will actually do something. But with our opponent on two cards, they don't have another land. We're just going to be able to, like, ending the Ogmoth and just kind of go off from there. So and here we go, like we cast a four a four color prismatic ending on the Yogmoth. We're able to just start getting in for damage with the Omnath, protecting the Teferi, just because we're gonna be probably need it at some point. And we just run out another ring to reset it, draw a card. Now we have the subtlety or the solitude if we if our opponent ends up being able to play another Yogmoth. But it's just a grist. We're going to just play the subtlety, get rid of their halfling, or no, yeah, get rid of their halfling. So they minus with this grist, so they could uh, sack this and then destroy Omnath. But our opponent is not going to get the chance to. So as a quick lesson, grist doesn't have you sacrifice a creature when you activate it. You activate it, and then when the ability resolves, you get the choice to sacrifice a creature or not so with us solituding with this grist trigger on the stack we get rid of their only creature that they have access to which means that on the next turn their grist is going to get attacked by like a halfling we're going to continue to draw cards and with three lands at our hand we're just going to outpace this ring and by the time that this ring would even be able to catch up to us we're going to have enough things already drawn and played to win the game so that is game one. I will shoot over real quick and do a sweet transition to get the second game started. And so here we're back for game two of a four color Omnath versus a Yogmoth. So our opponent gets to be on the play. This hand is a little bit better. Uh, thank you for stopping, Moto. I appreciate it. Uh, so with this hand, we have solitude and a way to pitch cast it. If we need to in Omnath, obviously it would be great to play this Omnath, but we do have a Nissa Resurgent Animus who's going to give us some virtual card advantage, kind of have the option of playing off curve so that we can just get a trigger off this on turn four in the same way. Still have some mana left over to hopefully cast something if we find it. Obviously the better plan would be to play it on turn three and then get to uh, play a fetch land, and then we end up getting a decent amount of mana plus you know potentially getting to cast whatever uh elemental that we find off of this nissa uh that said i know that yogmoth usually likes to side in some like targeted removal like in pylon and things like that so uh definitely as like the game plays on we can kind of see if uh we need to play around something like that but uh i felt like this hand was a pretty good you know, for what it was, our opponent doesn't play a one drop, so that's pretty good. And then we pick up this late line binding as well, which you know looks looks pretty good for us because it just kind of gives us an answer to something that our opponent can play. 
uh, opponent plays a string or a geist. I decide here to pitch the Omnaths of the Solitude and just get rid of the geist. Not going to mess around with it. You know, we're just going to kind of move on and kind of ride this uh, Nissa. Uh, we end up drawing the Halfling, so that makes me fetch a forest. So then we can play the Nissa and play the fetch land. Kind of detail what we're, we're going to do on like turn four, but instead of getting to do this on our turn three. Not being able to have like all the mana and things like that. Uh, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So now here, we play the Nissa, and this is kind of where like the forest is super awkward, because if we were able to, like, if we would have had the foresight that we were going to draw this halfling, we could have played the tri or gotten the Zagath Triome, which would give us the black mana we need, and then have like fetched uh, Rogren Triome with like the other one. Uh, then we could have played Delighted Halfling, whatever. And then we could have just gotten whatever with this fetch land. End up getting a mana, getting another mana, and then uh, being able to kind of like play Red and Six and Leyline Binding on this Grist. But it is what it is. We're still like in an okay position, but here we get the Zagath Triome, and we end up finding a Solitude, which we will be able to cast uh, next turn thanks to this uh, Nissa Resurgent Animist. And of course, like our opponent plays like the perfect card that we want to solitude in a Yawgmoth, so we're looking up pretty good in that aspect. Of course, draw the basic planes, but you know we're not in necessarily like any like bind or whatever to like do this. So we end up just getting to hard cast a solitude after playing another land, get the red and six down, get in some uh, damage as well. Our opponent has a backup grist. So they end up getting able to hit our red and six. Leaving our solitude around, uh, it kind of makes sense in a way because like the red and six is gonna slowly like accrue us uh, card advantage in a different sense. Like we're just gonna get to rebuy these lands, keep playing them. I probably would have argued for going after the Nissa Resurgent Animus just for the fact of, you know, we could eventually just like keep playing lands like where it's going to like technically ramp us you know it's going to be like a, a worse maybe like a better lotus cobra because this card can actually attack but you know it kind of is what it is but uh i also see the the thought and like just getting rid of the round six because it's going to keep triggering this nissa so and we don't have any fetch lands either so like it works out for our opponent very well that we don't really have a way to double trigger this nissa but you know we have a fury we have a solitude uh, we get to attack on the Grist with a Delighted Halfling, get our opponent for six, and we have five mana up. We have five mana up, so we're able to cast a Solitude on whatever they play, which ends up being a String Root Geist. Uh, perfect card that we can hit with our Solitude, or that we want to hit with our Solitude, because uh, if we Furied it, it would come back. We attempt to hit it, but then they play an Orcish Bowmaster, and then they actually ping their own Geist, which is really smart, uh, obviously for the fact that like we were going to end up exiling it, but the fact there that they get it back as well ends up being a blocker. Of course, like we have the Fury to clean all this up, but that could have been pr uh, pretty problematic, all things considered, for the fact that like we now attack... And they have some options of just like Stringer Geist, like eating the Delighted Halfling, and then like these two just like ganging up and killing a Solitude. So then it's like a Nissa and a Solitude versus a Stringer Geist. They're still not like in the best position, but that's like kind of a way that they could like, claw back into this game. Of course, that doesn't happen. We have the Fury, we just put it on the table, wipe their board, and get in for Exaxes. So while that game maybe was didn't feel like it was necessarily close uh just the fact that like nissa kind of hit like the perfect cards i mean we didn't want to hit omnath necessarily even though omnath is usually pretty good the fact that we kind of like ran out of fetch lands and they were able to deal with our uh, ren and six made solitude and fury a, a miles better choice for the fact that they were only playing like one one creature a turn anyway and we just had the you know exile it and get in for damage exile get in for damage deal damage to them get in for damage so uh ended up working out very well for us uh, i really enjoyed playing this four color deck we played kind of sloppy we definitely made some mistakes in game one and game two and even with like a halfway decent draw i mean obviously there's better draws out of the yogmoth deck but you know it was still 
you know, pretty, pretty much in it. Like it was able to kind of do its thing in game one. Just we had too much like solitude and fury, uh, kind of pressure on them for them to do anything in game one and game two. I think if we, you know, we draw like one less solitude. I mean, because we drew three solitudes and a fury. I think if we draw like one solitude, one fury in this game, and they're able to get rid of like our Nissa that uh, is a very good chance that we lose this game and, you know, we got to try to win a game three uh, on the play, but, you know, still, you know, having to uh, play and win a game three against our opponent who, you know, like I said, probably could have won the game if we drew less solitudes and stuff. So that's the nature of the matchup. It's something that I expect to see at the Pro Tour. Uh, I think Yawgmoth is a... Probably isn't underrated at this point, but I think it's more of a underplayed deck just for the fact that it it is very powerful. The the fact that it is a creature combo deck that can play like an aggro deck, and in some matchups you just want to be an aggro deck that is immune or virtually immune to like the wraths and stuff that your opponent plays, and you know have this option of you know having a combo if you need it, but not necessarily or when you want it, not necessarily needing it. So. Um, and of course, like this four color deck going in is one of the best decks to be playing in the format. Uh, I believe so. Uh, it was definitely very powerful. And the game where like we just had like the ring and we were drawing like two, three, four cards, and then we just reset it completely and just got to bury our opponent card advantage, and then eventually just bury them. Period. Uh, is is very good. And uh, I definitely recommend. Playing the four color deck, if anything, just because it's a lot of fun, just getting to play the ring and then like just keep drawing cards every turn. Super cool. Um, that's going to do it for me in this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video and, of course, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you know when videos like this and others get posted. And, of course, follow the links down in the description below to the Discord server and to my Twitch channel. I would appreciate it very much. That's going to do it for me, and I hope you all, uh, I hope to see you all in the next video.